Hi, Jennifer Savage, Surfrider Foundation's California Policy Manager, representing our 20 California chapters and thousands of supporters throughout the state. We really appreciated yesterday's presentations from the Center for Ocean Solutions on the Public Trust and from staff regarding the draft residential adaptation policy guidance. Thank you for the opportunity to add to the conversation. I must start with the obvious. Californians love their beaches. In a state full of wonderful wilderness options, no images of California are more iconic than sand, surf, sunsets, and waves. People move here, people visit here, people celebrate here because California's beaches inspire that kind of love. That love, by the way, also generates an over $44 billion per year coastal economy. Our coast, when protected, serves as a great equalizer. All Californians and the people who come here from around the world get to go to our beaches regardless of income, race, background, or social status. And yet, not only are our beaches disappearing, but in many cases, we are actively speeding the destruction along. That's why we are before you today, to implore you to save the beaches that we all love and depend on. Because hard armoring is killing our beaches one emergency permit at a time. When we meet rising seas with seawalls and revetments, we lose our beaches the recreational opportunities they provide, and the benefits our coastal economy brings to the entire state. In this presentation, we'll show you the alarming rate of armoring along California's coast and highlight some of the most pressing cases coming before you in the next several months. First, a quick review on the science. In brief, a seawall, and this is true for other types of hard armoring as well, interrupts the relationship between the waves and the beach, which means the sand in front of the wall gets washed away much faster. Less sand means less beach. Less beach means less room for the public to play. You can see what's happened at Solana Beach in um, San Diego County. Seawalls also wreck surf spots, destroy habitat, and diminish our state's identity. Nobody is traveling to California to visit seawalls. Second, the statistics. In the 1970s, San Diego County had three miles of seawalls in coastal armoring. Today, over 20 of 70 miles is armored. Add in Ventura, Los Angeles, and Orange counties, and you'll see that a full 33% of the Southern California shoreline is now armored. Combine that with Central California, and the result is that the southern two-thirds of our state have gone from having 20 miles of seawalls in the 1970s to having over 110 miles of armored coast today. This is a 400% increase. The decisions made by the commission will either encourage this trend or stop it. Which direction you go depends greatly on how you approach granting emergency permits. 93 emergency permits have been issued over the past decade. We know that despite even the best of intentions and permitting conditions, that emergency seawalls and revetments are almost never removed once established. In fact, we looked up all 93 emergency permits and did not find evidence that a single one was removed, but we did find many that were made permanent. Another problem with emergency arming is that it precludes any meaningful conversation of alternatives. This is especially troublesome when there are local coastal pro program updates that may be currently underway. We must rethink and reject the current emergency armoring policy. While individual permits may seem relatively harmless, they add up significantly when aggregated, and so do the associated impacts. We'll quickly take you through a few specific locations in hope of conveying a sense of how pervasive these problems are and how, instead of armoring, true solutions will work with anticipated coastal changes and protect the public trust. Hi, Mandy Sackett, um, Surfrider Foundation California Policy Coordinator. I'm going to start in Ocean Beach, San Francisco. As you can see in this historic photograph from the early 1900s, people have been coming to enjoy Ocean Beach for generations, and they still do. But before we get to modern times, please take a look at this photo of South Ocean Beach near Slope Boulevard in the early 1990s. This photo was taken just before a series of El Nino winters that caused significant erosion and destroyed the beach and dunes. Emergency armoring was placed in response, leaving the beach permanently damaged with no chance to recover. Notice how nice and wide the beach once was, a perfect beach profile. This is a photo of South o a recent photo of South Ocean Beach at the same location near Slope Boulevard. You can see how erosion has completely wiped out the beach at a higher tide, along with the piles of sandbags and concrete. Over the years, the city has been reluctant to remove the rocks and debris. Visitors have been stuck with the degraded beach ever since. Surfrider believes that a plan for managed retreat at Ocean Beach is necessary to restore the beach and sand, gain infrastructure security, and maintain public access for generations to come. We hope that the city's local coastal program update, when it comes before you by the end of the year, you will support the community's efforts to switch to a more proactive um, form of planning here. 
Another example is Galita Beach in Santa Barbara County. Here the beach is shown in March of this year severely eroded. We've spent a lot of time before you speaking about Galita Beach. Just as a quick history, Galita Beach was subject to two emergency revetments between 2002 and 2015, both of which have remained in place to this day. Those emergency revetments plus previous unpermitted revetment totaled 1,200 feet of rock armoring. In 2015, the Coastal Commission permitted the entire revetment for a 20-year term. This exemplifies perfectly how emergency revetments tend to stay in place. Most recently, in January 2017, the commission installed, uh, approved the installation of an additional 948 feet of emergency armoring at Goleta Beach. The county has now spent close to $2 million on emergency revetment and has barely any beach left to show for it. We hope the commission will carefully consider alternatives, such as softer solutions like cobble berms, for the long-term protection of Goleta Beach and when the county's proposal for dealing with the latest emergency revetment comes before you next spring. Another example of coastal structures remaining in place is at Surfers Point in Ventura. The Coastal Commission issued an emergency permit way back in 1992. That revetment, shown here, re uh, remained in place at Surfers Point until their managed retreat project began in 2011. It was one of the first of its kind and scale. The two-phase managed retreat project involves relocating coastal access infrastructure and parking spaces, as well as significant beach erosion. Phase one is now complete, and here you can see the same portion of beach almost completely restored by the project. Surfriders Ventura County chapter continuously champi championed the managed retreat approach for decades before it was finally successful, and now this, this approach can be used as a model for other cities. Other local jurisdictions should identify similar low-hanging fruit opportunities where public infrastructure can be relocated and beaches restored. And then more recently, um, in February of 2016, the city of Ventura constructed a 265-foot emergency rock revetment nearby um, to protect the promenade and C Street. Public concern about the city's response to erosion led to the formation of the Surfers Point Coalition. The coalition is now working to ensure the final permit addresses um, potential alternatives and that any future work has the least impact to recreational and aesthetic values at the beach. And the city is expected to bring this back in the near future, so we just wanted to put it on your radar. And then here's another example, um, this time in Orange County, this is our final example, over the winter storms and swells in late 2016 and early 2017, San Onofre State Beach experienced erosion and flooding, which led to parking lot and access road closure for several days. In response, State Parks it was issued an emergency permit to construct a 900-foot rock revetment. Um, and that was overkill, if you ask us. Access to the beach was closed for over 20 days during construction, far more than during the winter storms. And this photo shows the revetment during construction. As you can see, the beach has accrued a substantial amount of sand back since the winter storms. And here's the revetment fully constructed, directly in front of the, one of the state's most popular and iconic surfing locations. And this photo shows San Onofre State Beach on July 24th, this summer and it's at a portion of the beach located south of the emergency revetment, and it's clear that this beach is in need of a long-term solution that will address erosion of the entire beach and not just a piecemeal emergency response that only exacerbates erosion downstream. We applaud the commission for the strict conditions st um, contained in the emergency permit for San Onofre. The language in, is shown in this slide. They specify a hard deadline for removal by November 1st of this year. This was certainly a step in the right direction, and we'd like to see all emergency permits contain such language. The Coastal Commission can send a clear message that emergency permits are not substitutes for long-term planning by sticking to the November 1st removal requirement and directing parks to find a suitable alternative such as soft armoring. Development under emergency permits is for temporary resolution, not to serve as a long-term solution. Thanks. Your decisions on, on Ocean Beach, Goleta Beach, Surfers Point, San Onofre State Beach, and other armoring proposals that come before you offer the opportunity to protect the public's right to access by slowing the pace of armoring in California. You heard a great deal yesterday about the public trust and residential adaptation. We would like to build upon those strong presentations with our own recommendations moving forward. One, use the strongest definition of emergency. A bluff or structure that has been failing for years should not be subject to an emergency permit. A property owner's lack of planning should not be used to force your hand. Your default should be requiring a full CDP to allow for thoughtful analysis and public input. 
Two, encourage the use of softer solutions, especially for temporary emergency situations. Hard armoring should always be a last resort. Three, the cumulative statewide impact should always be considered in the granting of emergency permits. What would it be like to have hard armoring along 60 to 70 percent or more of our total coastline? We're heading in that direction. Four, if emergency armoring is approved, include and enforce an expiration date and removal plan. Further, require a removal bond to be held by the applicant as a permit condition to ensure funding exists for removal of the seawall or, rev or revetment once the emergency permit expires. If we keep armoring our shore, we will lose it. To effectively manage beach erosion in a long-term way, the state shoreline must be viewed as the connected system that it is, and we must stop allowing a patchwork of armoring. Otherwise, at this rate, our public beaches will become a progressively larger rock formation, forever destroying our shared and most cherished natural resource. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very both. That's very informative. Um, 110 miles of rock rebellions. <laughs>